Impala Films presents Haunted, the audio drama, Christmas special, A Very Haunted Christmas, part one of four, written by Jamie Evans. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw him, you would even say it glows All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games Then one foggy Christmas Eve Santa came to say, Santa? No. Santa? No. I'll cue you again. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Way! Then how the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll go down in history You'll go down in... Watch out! Hold on! <laughs> Is everybody all right? Oh, I'm okay. My door's buckled a bit, though. Oh, oh, that's going to cost a fortune to get fixed. Here, let me help you. I'm fine, by the way. Thank you. What the hell happened? Something ran out in the road. A rabbit or something, I think. You almost got us killed over a rabbit. Didn't realise you were such an animal lover, James. Would you rather we hit it? Well, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything, but if it's a choice between squishing a bunny and us burning to death in a fiery car crash, I'd rather squish the bunny, to be honest. Careful, you'll upset the vegans. (sighs) So, how bad is it? Well, it doesn't look too bad, considering how bad it could have been. Looks like most of the damage is to your door, Abigail. And the front bumper. My mum is going to kill me! I can't believe I crashed it again! Again? What again? When was this? Never mind. Let me me just see if it'll start. She bumped into a lamppost going too fast around a roundabout back home. Oh, really? Yep. She isn't great with speed limits. Damn it! Well, look on the bright side. It looks like we aren't far from the town. Time for a hike? Wonderful. Come on, exercise will do you good. Uh, the waistcoat's looking a bit tight. Really? Abigail, do I look fat? Abigail? Look at this hole. Um, it looks like a rabbit, Warren. Probably where it hid after nearly becoming a rabbit sandwich. I thought I heard something coming from it. Like the sound of a family of rabbits welcoming their mum home, or... Like singing. Singing rabbits. Well, I guess that's not that hard to believe after dealing with a werefox. It sounded like children singing. It was, it was just for a moment, but I'm sure I heard it. Right. Here, have some whiskey. We've got to get going. You don't want to keep your mum waiting, do you? Cheers. Wow, my mum was right. This town is beautiful. Although, I'm not so sure you could call it a town. It's tiny. (laughs) I think it's a village, Abs. I wonder what the official point is where you go from being a village to a town. Is it population density? Area squared? This is a hamlet. Look at it. It's barely two roads. Also, it looks like hell on earth. It looks lovely. Why are all the houses covered in those lots? Um, because it's Christmas? I know, but all of them... Doesn't that seem excessive? What's your problem with Christmas? I know. He's been grumpy all day. What sort of person doesn't like Christmas? I would point out that Christmas is a religious holiday, and seeing as none of us are religious, at least not anymore, none of us should actually be celebrating it. Oh, I forgot you were so noble. Standing up for religious purity. Come on. My mum was meeting us at the American diner. American? Wait, what? An American diner. 
in a hamlet this size. Hey, wait! Fresh parsnips, get your fresh honey glazed parsnips. Merry Christmas, gentlemen and lady. Merry Christmas. Wow, they sure are friendly. It's sickening. I feel like I've walked into a TV holiday special. What on earth is going on? This is Hamsworth Village. It's officially the most Christmassy place in the UK. I've heard of this place. They make a fortune in tourism each year, don't they? Doesn't it all look lovely? Feels like old school Christmas. It's got a certain charm, I must admit. Christmas doesn't really feel the same these past few years, does it? It might be the tackiest thing I've ever seen. Look at all these lights, and look, that person's put fake snow in their windows. It's still in double digits out here. Who do they think they're fooling? This, right here, is everything wrong with the commercialization of... Is that? Ha <laughs> ha! Now here's a Christmas tradition I can get behind. Is he all right? I'm starting to worry about him. Have you noticed he's been drinking more than usual lately? Really? I didn't know that was possible. Here we go. Mulled wine. Now that smells delicious. That one's for you, deputy. Cheers. Oh, there you guys are. Mum! Hello, sweetie. Mrs. Corbin. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry, Cheryl. Hello, James. How are you? Since when were you two on first name basis? It's good to see you again, Mrs. Corbin. Hello, Dan. How are you? Have you been enjoying life on the road? Uh, it's definitely interesting. That much I can't deny. What about you, Mum? How are things with the church? Well, the town councillor finally voted to rebuild after the fire. A much smaller building than before. I suppose it makes sense. They wouldn't be able to recreate all of that history anyway. Would you like some mulled wine, Mrs. Um, Cheryl? That would be lovely, Mr. Hunter. Thank you. Um, excuse me one minute, would you? And what can I get you, darling? Another mulled wine, please. Come right up, sweet thing. James? Yes. You... I mean... The thing is, see, it's like... Are you okay? Are you having a stroke? Truthfully, I always thought of the two of us, I'd be the one who packed up first, but life does surprise you. Are you, you know, flirting with my mum? Don't be silly. But you do, you know, do that, right? Like, you, you're into... You, you've dated before, right? Abigail. I am 35 years old. I think it's safe to assume I've dated before. So, what? My mum isn't good enough to flirt with, is that it? Here you go, sugar. Here, take some of our candy canes on the house. And if you'd like to look at our dessert menu, we're doing a special at the moment. Desserts from around the world. Authentic cakes, pastries and sweet treats from all over. Oh wow, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, darling. Merry Christmas. Abigail, I think you're getting confused as to your own point. You're right, that's my bad. I have trouble staying on track sometimes. My point is, please don't flirt with my mum. I'm not flirting. Believe me, you'll know when I'm flirting. Ah. One mulled wine for the lady. Thank you. Candy cane. Thanks. Very sweet. James. Yes? What? Shut up. Bar humbug. Whose idea was it to put an American diner in a tiny village like this? Oh, it's lovely. I haven't been here since the 80s. I was barely a teenager then. You have to admit, it's nice not being wrapped up in any spooky business for once. Look around. Everyone's merry, everything looks great, and there's no trouble at all. Come quickly! Someone's knocked down the village tree! You were saying, Dan? What? I didn't mean... Why do you talk? Why? No, 
that lovely tree. Probably teenagers or something messing around and they've knocked it over. I don't think so, honey. That tree was secured with metal cables. Look, you can see one there. Oh my God, you're right. Look, it's just dangling there. Do you think someone cut it? No, it, it doesn't look cut. Looks like someone unscrewed it. I should have known something like this was coming. We've been having all sorts of mischief here these last few days. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Lots and lots of weird pranks happening around town. People's garden displays being tampered with. Ornaments being rearranged into rude positions. Just the other day, I'd spent all morning baking a batch of gingerbread men. I left them to cool whilst I watched my stories. And when I came back, they were all gone. Every single one. There's a mischief maker in town. You're the lady from the diner, correct? Mm -hmm. Darlene Morris. Pleased to meet you. James Hunter. This is Abigail Corbin, Dan Cowell and Cheryl Corbin. When you say mischief maker, surely it's some local youths, no doubt, driven to boredom by small town life. Have the police looked into it? We don't have much in the way of a police force out here. Not much call for them, really. When we do need them, we call the department over in Ashby. It's a much larger town, so the police are based there. They certainly wouldn't come out here for missing gingerbread men. You mean that's not a top priority for them? And when we tried calling them about the sightings, they laughed right at us down the phone. Still, I suppose I'd struggle to take it seriously. Sightings? Well, it all started a few days ago when old Betty Winkle heard a noise like footsteps on her roof. She went out into her garden and she reckoned she saw a man in a red suit on the roof. When she tried calling to him, he slid down the side of the building and ran away. The following night, Peter Bushel spotted him in his garden with a pair of binoculars. When you say red suit... Santa Claus, of course! Santa's been hiding around the village, often around the same houses that have had their gardens trashed or other such mischief. Mrs. Brady, up the road, said somebody had broken into her house and eaten all the chocolates out of her kids' advent calendars. But the police don't want to know. Dan's a police officer. We could take a look if you like. What? Abigail, I really don't think we have time. Yes, we do. Well, y your mother was really looking forward to seeing you. I'm sure she doesn't want to. I don't mind. I think it would be fun. I'd love to see your investigating skills at work. Oh, wow. Well, we'd certainly be appreciative if you guys could help us at all. Well, that settles it. We'll help this village out and put a stop to all this mischief. This is fantastic. Gang? Please don't say it. Let's capture Santa Claus. OK, team. Our target is named Santa Claus, alias Father Christmas, alias St Nicholas, alias Chris Kringle, and, for a brief period in the 90s, alias Tim Allen. There is not enough mulled wine in this diner. Description of the perp is as follows. He wears a red velvet suit, has a large white beard, and a belly that shakes like a bowl full of jelly. Sort of like James's will if he doesn't stop drinking. Ha ha. So, what's the plan, sweetie? We should split into teams of two to keep a lookout. Hamsworth is tiny. There's only really, like, two main streets. Our primary goal should be intelligence gathering. Don't confront him unless necessary. <laughs> Man, how did I end up here? All right, all right. How do we pick teams? Well, if it's OK, I'd like to be paired with my mum, seeing as I haven't seen her in a few weeks. It'd be nice to catch up. I agree. No, wait, so that means... I'm, I'm paired, paired with... with... Damn, Damn it! it. What's that? It's an EMF reader. It measures fluctuations in electromagnetic fields. It's thought to be a common indicator of supernatural activity. Wow, that's incredible. I can't believe how scientific it all is. Do you think we'll see it? Fluctuations, I mean. I don't know. I, I never thought I'd be hunting Santa Claus. I'd imagine flying reindeer would cause some sort of atmospheric disturbance, though. <laughs> that would definitely be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. Obviously, we're probably not dealing with a literal Santa Claus. I think James is probably right and some local youths are to blame. I'm sure they're harmless, just need a good talking to. Here, let's hide behind this garage. Darlene said there's been trouble at these two houses there for the last two nights. Why those two, do you think? I'm not sure. They're dressed up even more than the others? Perhaps that's attracting the worst sort of attention. Well, whoever lives in that one on the left is a good baker. Huh? 
You can smell it from here. Oh, wow. That smells delicious. Oh, sorry. A bit peggish, I think. Well, there's nothing to say we can't keep a lookout from the car. We could grab some food from the diner and shelter in the warmth. Uh, about that. What? About the car. You see, I sort of... I sort of crashed into a tree on the way into town. What? Abby, you crashed another car. Don't say it like that. It's not like I've crashed a hundred of them. Just four. Are you okay? I'm fine, Mum. I'm not hurt. It, It really wasn't that bad. Were you driving too fast? No. We were singing and something ran into the road. I swerved to avoid it and I bumped a tree. It looks much worse than it is. Well, I thank the Lord you weren't harmed. Wait, were you all singing? Even Mr Hunter? (laughs) Ha! James, sing! Of course not. I can't imagine him singing. I reckon he'd have a nice voice. Mum! What? Don't be gross! How am I being gross? It was only a comment. Well, I don't like where that comment was leading. You do realise with all this noise we've been making, you probably scared Santa away, right? God damn it! Abigail! Sorry, sorry. Boy, I hope Dan and James are having better luck than we are. (sighs) Alright, I'm bored. Let me look through the binoculars. Get your own pair. Those are my pair. All you had on you was an EMF meter, a stick of chewing gum, a dictaphone, a half-built something that even you can't remember what it's supposed to be. It'll come to me. I think it might have been a seismometer. And a second flask of booze in case your first flask ran out. I always come prepared. I have three flasks on me at any one time. Where's the third one? You don't want to know. Ugh. Come on, I'm bored. You're like a child. Has anybody told you that? I would have thought you'd be good at this part. It's a stakeout. Didn't you do loads of stakeouts in the police force? Yeah, but on those, I was with people I actually like. Go on. I I just mean they were more exciting. We'd be staking out known drug dealers or or gangsters, not bloody Father Christmas. (sighs) So, just between us, this isn't the actual Santa Claus, right? I mean... He's not real, is he? Do I look like an expert on Christmas mythology? Well, I don't know, do I? You're an expert in ghosts and goblins. Why not Santa Claus as well? (sighs) Because Santa Claus is not real. Well, I'd have said the same about those other two before I met you. Maybe this should be a quiet stakeout, yeah? (sighs) Okay. Oh, their house looks nice. Is that a pool in the back garden? (sighs) They must have some money. I'd definitely target them if I was a robber. Dan. Uh, Sorry. Oh, hey, look, mistletoe. Don't even think about kissing me. I I wasn't going to. I am going to take a bit, though. Why on earth are you taking that? I was thinking I might hang... You know what? Never mind. I was just thinking I'm... Shut up. There's no need to be rude. Someone's there. Look. Give me the binoculars. Oh, here. Look, that back garden over there. Bloody hell. That looks like Santa Claus, all right. Red suit, grey beard, in need of a diet. Uh, Not that I'm fat-shaming Santa Claus or anything. What's he doing? It looks like he's waving something around. It looks kind of like an old-school mobile phone. You remember the sort with the aerials on them? There's a green light blinking on it. (laughs) Is Santa high-tech now? I don't think it's Santa. He's climbing the house. Look, Look, he's scaling that rose trellis. Let's go after him. No, Abigail said observe. No time. You go that way, I'll go this way. We'll catch him in a pincer manoeuvre. Now! Stop right there, Santa Claus! God, there's a sentence I thought I'd never say. Oh no, you don't! (coughs) Sorry! Police officer, I need to get on your roof! James! What? Hurry up, he's getting away! You try climbing a rose trellis after six glasses of mulled wine. Freeze! Right where you are, Santa Claus! I'm coming to get you! Wait, I I know you! Wait right there, Santa! I'm coming to get you! James? 
James Hunter. Preston? Oh, no, not you again. Always happy to see you, old chap. Why? Why do things like this always happen to me? Would you like a hand up? I don't need your help, thank you. I've got this completely under control. Uh, James! Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter, Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin, and Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, Benton Hodges, Edina Fisher Allen, Rory Jocelyn. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Jamie Evans and Charles Topping. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next exciting chapter of Haunted, the audio drama.